you know, it's so easy to say crap like that. It's not your money that these people are going to be losing, though. You need to think about what you're doing with your investments. And when you hear somebody come out on YouTube, like I saw a guy do two years in a row, and nobody pointed out to the year before where he said the same thing. I can't remember this clown's name, but he said, I have inside information that everything's going to collapse at the end of September, and you need to you know, liquidate your 401k now. He said the same thing twice in a row. You know, Listen, man, I know this is a hyperinflation for his gold tribe's telling me here, but in the end, we have got to stay sane with what we're doing, and we have to understand that even though we have a point where uh, we can go into a hyperinflation curve, there's, if you're paying attention, there's almost always time. And we need to think. We need to think before we make statements like just liquidate your 401k and pay the, pay the penalties. Because if I've got five grand in there and I'm going to pay a, a, a thousand bucks in penalties, maybe. If I'm going to lose $100,000 to do this, maybe not. We have, Thinking is hard. That's why it's important that we do it. So just be careful with blanket statements. And I'm not putting down the guy that said it again, but the reason I get like amped up when I hear some of this stuff, right, is because I see it used by people all the time that are trying to sell you on one idea or sell you on one thing or another. Make sure you're thinking independently for yourself because taking a $25,000 hit to pay the tax man with that you might be able to wait another 15 years if you're smart and you're careful uh, and not pay at all, that's something you don't really want to do. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take the next question. Um, I think Ultra Quiet, we just answered, hands still up. So let's take Skedway. Uh, I'm not sure if I got your handle right. If I got it wrong, I'm sorry. He got you there in the uh, chat room. What's your opinion on subsidized loans for college? Is it a good idea to keep uh, it as backup money since you don't pay interest on it? I'm getting a degree in electrical engineering and am low on money right now. So you want to know if you could take a college loan and use it to pay your living expenses with and go into more debt. No, don't do it. I mean, that's. No, I'll just leave it there. I'm sorry. Um, I think that student loan debt is one of the biggest uh, – things that we have that's destroying America. We have students coming out of college with eighty, a hundred, a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in debt. If I'm hearing you wrong, if that's not what you're asking me, please clarify there for me. Um, but if you're saying basically can you pay your rent with your with your student loans? Um, not really. If you're it sort of looks like maybe you're asking me, can you take the student loan money and put it in the bank and hold it as cash? Um uh, you can do anything you want, but I sure as heck wouldn't do it. Um, I, I'm sorry if I seem hard on some of these things here, but I've just seen so many of these ideas shopped around to people for so long, and I've seen so many people that think these ideas are great ideas and it's going to work out for them, and I've seen them long-term, whenever they thought was going to happen, not happen, get burned. And I don't like to see people burned and hurt because things that are complicated get oversimplified by, by people that want to sound intelligent, if, if that makes sense. So... Um, if you're having trouble getting through school and you're having trouble doing it without debt, it's time that you start looking at different ways to get your schooling done. And it's amazing how much money, and, and if you're already in your third year or something, I know that some of these things aren't going to work for you, but, you know, we looked at it for my son, and by doing two years in a community college and staying at home and paying for it up front, and then going into uh, university to do the last two years, the total savings on uh, a four-year degree come out to $28,000. And by not borrowing $28,000, you're not going to pay back $40,000. It's interest-free until you start paying it back and you get out of school for a certain amount of time. I don't like debt. I don't like debt. And praying for a job when you come out is not really a good plan. Um, I'm very... I'm very hesitant to recommend that people go to college unless they know exactly why they're going, exactly what they want out of it, and they have a good plan to keep any debt that comes off. Um, I, I would not go into student loan debt right now for anything in the world because the 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 how you know what we're looking at are coming out. Um, 
into a marketer coming out with, with a piece of paper that says you have a right to look for a job. I just don't think it's worth fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars worth of debt right now. Sorry if that's not a great answer, man. That's the best I can do for you. Let's take the next question from uh, uh, a Kara twenty seven. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the Fed's going to do, except that I can tell you what they're committed to is starting up inflation, to, to, to try to reinflate the bubble, so to speak. Um, the Fed is on a bend in quarter ending two. They have not started, all, if they have not started, already, do you see a major downturn in the markets? Here's what I'm going to tell you, where I'm like completely at odds with everybody that I tend to agree with, which makes me wonder if I'm crazy. What I see for the markets in the next two years is an improvement. I don't see a return to the all-time high, but I see an improvement. Uh, I see an economy that's going to look like it's not fixed but getting better in 2011 and 2012. Uh, I believe that our president has sat on a huge piece of the what they call the stimulus or the spendulous package as his re-election fund. I believe he's allowed all his cohorts in the Senate and the Congress to fall on their swords and be sacrificed on the halter, and uh, that a lot of that money is going to actually start getting spent. Uh, Keynesian economics, yeah, that's clown. Keynesian economics does work short term. It's like giving a drunk a credit card. He looks great for a while. I do think we'll start to see some level of, again, what looks like recovery. I do think that will give people some confidence in the economy going forward, even if it's false confidence. Um, hold on, I'm shutting the window because there's a plane flying overhead. Uh, maybe it's a black helicopter. Who knows? Um, but as that confidence is restored, I think a lot of Americans have been saving money. Uh, just because they're a little bit worried, but they're not smart people like the people in this room that are really thinking long term. If they can go another six months and get through Christmas without losing their job, all of a sudden all that money is going to start. We're talking about disposable income savings here. It's going to start eating a hole in their pockets. They're going to realize, hey, I made it through. It's okay. Things are looking better. Hey, my 401k balance is up at least to a 301k instead of a 201k. Things are feeling better, and they're going to start spending money, and inflation will kick in behind it. And when that inflation kicks in behind it, everybody's income statement, everybody's balance sheet in the corporate world short term will look better. It'll look better at first because there's a lag between the cost of the goods they're purchasing to produce and the cost of what they're selling out. And we'll get what looks like a really big false recovery. The band will play. Everybody will say, you know, they, they save the day. But at the end of that bubble is nothing, nothing substantial. It's nothing but a public relations campaign. And the next bust, I, I'm completely in league with Peter Schiff. I just think it's going to take longer than he does, is, is a, debt bu a debt bubble. It's a treasury bust. It, and when that happens... That's the underlying value of the United States of America. And I think that is a place where a lot of people are going to get hurt. And don't ask me to tell you whether it's going to be a massive inflation, which it very well could be, or a massive deflation. We could have something that looks akin to a turbocharged version of the 1970s or a turbocharged version of the 1930s. Both of them are very, very different, and both of them are very, very painful to go through. And the people that went through the 30s were a lot better suited to go through it than we are today. And I think we're going to see something much more akin to the true Great Depression. Um, you know, 1873 was bad. Yeah, 19, 1907 wasn't very good either, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of bad years out there that we've forgotten. Uh, I try to stick to the ones that most people uh, think about. Um, but there is no guarantee what it's going to look like when it happens. Uh, there's a lot of people that manipulate things uh, out there in the world, as we all know. And even they, with their manipulation, don't always get the result they were betting on. Don't Again, don't think this is the World Wrestling Federation. This is, uh, this is boxing. This is a lot of manipulation, but no guarantee of exactly who's going to get knocked out in the fray. 
Uh, let's go ahead and take another question. I got silver bugs uh, with the next question. You can either do it by my. Uh, thank you, Jack. It's a pleasure to talk to you. This is Daryl Head from uh, Silver Bugs on Facebook, and I was I had a question about uh, collapse of the fiat uh, system here in the United States and the world, for that matter. Um, that seems to be the biggest threat now. The, uh, uh, the the collapse of the economy collapse. It seems as though. Um, do you foresee a lot of civil unrest at that time? And after that, do you see the the government coming in with a martial law to get, grasp control of, of this uh, horrific situation? And which scenario is worse, the civil unrest or the martial law part of this scenario? Any comments? Wow. Um that's a tough one. I think we're at nine o'clock, so that might be the last one. Way to uh, way to back clean up with the questions there, man. Um, I'll tell you what. Here's here's again what I what I want to say about the collapse issue uh, of a fiat currency. It is far more likely that what they will do is revalue the currency and buy it back up. You got to remember one thing about this country, and it's the first time in the history of the world that we've ever had this be the case. We now have a country on the verge of bankruptcy that has the capacity to wipe out all life on the planet. It has a very strong military force and a high redundancy within that, and that's going to make this a very difficult thing for this nation to ever just completely collapse and be... I mean, there's people out there that basically figure the Chinese and the British are just going to come over here like a, like a, a banker and, and just take things over. Um and that is not a good thing. I'm not saying that a good thing. That's a it's a it's a very precarious uh, point that we're in. What I actually see happening if the economy completely fails, it'll look more like Argentina or Russia than it would look like. You know, everybody talks about Weimar, and uh, a little less about Weimar is an aside. While we're doing this, people always talk about the fact that you needed a uh, a wheelbarrow full of money to buy a sack of potatoes during the Weimar Republic, nobody ever turns around and says, well, how much were the potatoes actually worth? And, and this is my big fear, that if we have a collapse of the economy, it's what people are going to do without. We are now in a place where if the government can't make good on its own debts, the only way it can do it is by printing more money and they keep devaluing it. We have Bernanke sitting in front of Ron Paul in the Congress a couple of years ago, asked if he could guarantee the payments to Social Security recipients. And his answer is what? Yes, we can guarantee the money. We just can't guarantee its value. So what we get into a point is where all these people that have been depending on these programs find out that either they're not getting that check or they're not getting that food stamp card or it won't buy enough to actually sustain them, and you bet they'll go to the streets. You bet they'll go to the streets. You bet they'll riot. I think there's parts of this country that in the worst collapse in history would stick together and stay together and, and be there for each other and help each other just like this country did during the Great Depression. Uh, we talked about how bad that was, but it really showed us what we were made of. But there are also people and there are also parts where, just like Europe, as somebody saying in the chat room, they'll be rioting. As for whether it's worse for the riots to happen or it's worse for martial law, the problem with martial law isn't when it's being enacted, it's when it doesn't go away. It's when liberties are permanently stripped. Our big problem as a nation is we've allowed our government to become what it is. We can only blame Washington for so much. People tell me how upset they are with Obama or how upset they were with Bush. I'm not upset with Bush or Obama. I'm upset with the people who have decided this is the best that we can do. And the majority of Americans... They have decided that you can think that you know the 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 the, uh, the powers that be are in control, but we're the people that let this stuff happen, and it's up to us to start informing people that we don't have to settle for the lesser of two evils. There there is a system in place that we could use to fix it, but we haven't done so. As for the actual breakdown, though, we may not be successful, and the breakdown may come, and the riots may occur, and I do think that the last place you want to be in the middle of a riot like that is going to be anywhere near a big city. I do think that the further out you are, the safer that you're going to be. Um, I do not subscribe to the view 
uh, the people that follow, you 